From the iPhone 15 to the Galaxy Z Fold 5, there are plenty of phones to be excited about in 2023. Now, of course, it's impossible to really know what's in store until these phones are officially announced. Apple, Samsung, Google, and OnePlus are usually pretty quiet about new products until they're ready to announce them. But most of these companies stick to a regular schedule when it comes to smartphone launches, so we have an idea of what to expect and when. Combine that with rumors and leaks, and we're starting to get a decent picture of which new phones are likely to arrive throughout 2023. Here's a look at the rumored smartphones I want to see this year. Apple's new iPhones usually launch in September, and USB-C charging is one of the biggest changes we're expecting to see. That's because the European Union recently mandated that all new phones sold in Europe must support USB-C charging by 2024. We don't know if Apple will make that change this year or next, but when it does, you'll be able to charge your iPhone with the same cable you use to charge your other electronics, including your MacBook. Apple is also expected to add more features to the iPhone 15 Pro that distinguish it from the regular iPhone 15. That could include adding new solid-state buttons to the Pro models, meaning we might see haptic keys for the volume and power buttons just like the home button on the iPhone SE. Another thing I'm excited about is the Dynamic Island's expected debut on the regular iPhone 15, not just the Pro. We'll have to wait until September to know more, but an iPhone 15 with USB-C and the Dynamic Island certainly seems appealing. The OnePlus 11 is already available in China, but it launches globally on February 7th. The new phone will have a massive 6.7-inch screen, Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, and 100-watt fast charging. That's a step up from the 80-watt fast charging found on certain models of the OnePlus 10 Pro. OnePlus has a reputation for packing a lot of power at a reasonable price, although its prices have inched closer to flagships from Apple and Samsung in recent years. The OnePlus 10 Pro came really close to being a superb iPhone competitor, so we're looking forward to seeing whether that's true again with the OnePlus 11. The Galaxy S22 Ultra already has a powerful camera, and Samsung may be looking to take that further with the rumored Galaxy S23 Ultra. Samsung's next premium phone is expected to have a 200 megapixel main camera that's likely powered by the company's brand new image sensor. That would be a huge jump from the S22 Ultra's 108 megapixel main camera, at least on paper. It's important to remember that resolution isn't everything when it comes to photography. Sensor size and speed also play a very big role, so I'm excited to see whether a 200 megapixel camera would actually make a noticeable difference. We'll probably know more about the Galaxy S23 Ultra on February 1st, when Samsung holds its next unpacked event. If Google repeats last year's launch pattern, we could be seeing a cheaper version of the Pixel 7 arrive in the spring or summer. The Pixel 6a has the same Tensor processor as the Pixel 6, but costs $150 less than the Pixel 6 did at launch. Google may take a similar approach for the Pixel 7a. Leaks have suggested that the Pixel 7a could have a screen with a higher 90Hz refresh rate and wireless charging. Those may seem like small changes, but they would bring the Pixel 7a even closer to high-end premium phones. If Google does launch a Pixel 7a this year, we might hear more about it at Google I.O., which usually takes place in May. And of course, Google is also expected to release the Pixel 8 lineup this fall. We haven't heard many rumors about it yet, but it will likely run on a new version of Google's Tensor chip. To be honest, that's the main reason why I'm excited about these phones. So far, the Tensor chip has brought some pretty interesting features to Pixel devices, like general camera improvements, face unblur for sharpening subjects that are out of focus, and the ability to add speaker labels to transcripts in the Recorder app. I'm curious to see where Google will take things next with the third generation of its Tensor chip. We'll probably know more in the fall. There's one big thing I'm hoping to see in the Galaxy Z Fold 5, and that's an S Pen in the box along with a storage slot on the phone. That could possibly arrive on the Z Fold 5, which would make it much more useful as a productivity device. You have to buy the S Pen separately right now for the Galaxy Z Fold 4, and there's no way to attach it or store it in the device. 
I don't find myself using the S Pen all that often on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, but I might on a phone like the Z Fold 5. The foldable screen makes it sort of resemble a notebook, which means it might be more ideal for jotting down notes. Plus, the S Pen seems like a natural fit for a device with a screen as large as the Z Fold. Otherwise, I'm hoping to see longer battery life, more software features that make that foldable screen feel useful, and a less noticeable crease. We'll probably know more in August, which is when Samsung usually releases new foldable phones. If Samsung keeps its typical launch pattern, we will also likely see a new Galaxy Z Flip in August. The Z Flip is interesting because it's the most practical foldable you can buy right now. It feels the most like a regular phone, so the learning curve is relatively low. And it usually starts at $1,000, making the price feel similar to what you'd pay for a premium phone like the iPhone 14 Pro. However, I do think Samsung needs to do a little more to make the Z Flip stand out. Flex mode is a great start, but I don't know if it's enough to make people want to buy a foldable phone over a cheaper regular phone. There are also a few other things I'd like to see Samsung improve in the next Z Flip, like longer battery life and a bigger cover screen. Google hasn't entered the foldable phone race yet, but that could change soon. Google may release a foldable phone in 2023 that looks like the Oppo Find N, according to 9to5Google. A YouTuber recently claimed to have gotten his hands on a design mock-up of the Pixel Fold, and it kind of looks like Microsoft Surface Duo. Of course, we won't know anything for certain unless Google announces a foldable phone. But there are a couple of reasons why I'm excited about the idea of a Pixel Fold. Google has recently gained a reputation for undercutting Samsung and other phone makers on price, so the Pixel Fold could end up being fairly affordable if it maintains that strategy. Foldables are also still a little bit of a novelty. They appeal to early adopters, but most people still really don't see the value in foldable phones just yet. Since Google operates Android and has a history of coming up with unique features for its regular Pixel phones, I'm hoping it'll do the same for a Pixel Fold. What phones are you most excited about in 2023? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to catch our upcoming smartphone reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.